Tuki. Say hi, Tuki. <laughs> Look at that underbite. Mm. Hi, everybody. What up, players? It is Warboss Tay up this mug. Welcome to a video. I guess wrap up or showcase of some miniatures that I've been working on. This is my studio update for today. It's December 18th. It is the official opening night of Star Wars The Force Awakens and I'm here painting little metal men. So this is Gandalf the Grey as portrayed by the amazing Sir Ian McClellan and I guess he's in his Gandalf the White outfit. He's still got his robes on. I don't know if this when this miniature is supposed to represent him before he's revealed himself to Theoden. But he's pulling out his sword, and unfortunately the uh, client, when he sent me this miniature, this, the top of his staff had been broken off, it's, and it wasn't in the, um, the bag of, of miniatures. But I did want to paint him up because I actually have a second Gandalf included with this commission. This Gandalf is an imposter! And I'll be painting that up for a tutorial. I wanted to test out my color scheme though, and I think I did pretty well with him. I love, I love the sculpt. I've, I've sent some, I guess, not totally supportive things of the Lord of the Rings miniatures in the past because of the smaller scale. I just thought, you know, it's too bad they're not as, as, I guess, big and beefy and chunky as the other stuff that Games Workshop does. But because all of the the, the hands and and the uh, the heads and their their bodies are in scale, right? They're they look like how they're supposed to look because they're modeled after the actual actors, rather than big uh, big giant cartoony concepts like Space Marines. So not, the more like I actually painted it, when I actually painted it, the more I looked at it, I I realized you know this is they're more I guess pieces of of art to me because you re really can see that this looks like Ian McClellan. The features, the wig, um, the the way that the, the character is dressed, the robes, very, very simple. You don't see his top at all. You kind of see his trousers peeking out from there and his robes just kind of cover everything. It's very, very simple and just really, really nice. Okay, also included in this commission, these are all just random models that, that didn't, I guess were kind of separate. I've also got a fellowship and uh, some identified models that I that I could name, like the Gandalf figure with a staff over his head. I've got an Eowyn, and I think this might be Eomar and uh, Bilbo. So I'll, I'll go through those at the end of the video, the, the models that I still have to paint, but I want to show off these finished ones first. So I think, I'm not sure because I, I looked everywhere online, I could not figure out who this model is. I think it's Theoden marching off to battle, he's pulling his sword out. I'm not sure though because I, I couldn't find it in any of the Google image searches for the Lord of the Rings and it looks like he's he's in Rohan and uh, armor and it looks like he's very very decorative and ceremonial so that's why I thought it was Theoden but could be wrong. I painted his beard and hair to be blonde because that's that's how I imagined him and after doing some shading the armor plates really for for games workshops lord of the rings figures i think they match the the darker grittier more washed looks i think when they came out at the time they had just released their first attempt at the washes like bad at black and uh, all of that so i think everybody was using it and they wanted to just make all the models look really shaded and there was not too much thought and effort put into highlights for a lot of the models i felt could have been highlighted a lot better. So by adding on this Runefang steel highlight after shading it with the known oil, you get this beautiful reflection on the helmet, on the armor plates. I also lined the armor plates in gold, you'll see, because the plates, some of them have a mold on it or, or a line sculpted onto it, molded onto it that I thought makes it appropriate to have that gold trimming, which also leads me to the conclusion that it, it is an officer, somebody with a little bit of gilted edging on their on their armament. And I did the Rohan, I guess like dark burgundy brownish red with the green trim for his uh, clothes there and yeah that's what he looks like. So I've got two figures from the Attack on Weathertop set that Games Workshop had created. It was kind of like a starter box set. You kind of get everything to play a game. You get the miniatures, you get the rules and these were the two 
the, the or the Sam and the Frodo models that came in it. I think the sculpt for the oh. Sam, Sam face is just spot on. It looks just like Sean Austin to me. And uh, for Frodo, the way his features are sculpted, his hair, I, I think he looks great as well. So I did shading, but I also did some some highlights on it. And for for dark trousers. My uh, my tip is Dryad Bark shaded with Agrax Earthshade or Nuln Oil in this case, and then highlight it up with Gorthor Brown. That creates those. I get the I guess the idea of the highlighted pants and the the fabric moving as it flows over the skin. For the jacket, I did Steel Legion Drab shaded with Nuln Oil, highlighted back up with Steel Legion Drab, and a little bit of Zandri Dust. Very simple. It's the vest. If you think of. Elijah Wood as Frodo in, in the original uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, you might remember that his vest is a very characteristic reddish brown. So in order to achieve that effect, I did Doom Bowl Brown shaded with Nuln Oil and highlighted back up with Doom Bowl Brown. And you want to add a little bit of, I believe it was Zandri Dust to it. So it's not so bright a highlight. Like if I went with Rackarth Flesh, it, would be, it might be a little bit too ivory, bone colored. But I think that you still maintain that, that really nice red color and um, you, you give it just a little pop as well. The hair, I tried to match Elijah Wood's dark wig. I think it was a wig, I don't think that was his real mop top. By doing dryad bark shaded with known oil, highlighted back up with, I think it was a, a, a little touch of, of Zandri dust or Rackarth flesh. You might notice that I, I repeat the highlight colors because when you add that color to whatever color you're working with, in this case Zandri dust or uh, even Gorthor brown looks like you had added Zandri dust to Dryad bark to create the lightning color. Everything has the kind of same tone to its highlight. And I think that's really good when you're making a cohesive looking miniature. The back, or his cloak, was this characteristic green, which I just did Castellan Green, shaded with known oil and highlighted back up with Castellan Green, adding again a little bit of Zandri dust. So there's your Frodo. And I want to talk one, one more time about Sam because if you look at Sean Austin's, uh, Sam Wise's cloak in the movies, it's not really gray and it's not really green. It's a kind of mixture of the two. And when you combine that with the fact that his, his jacket, his coat in the first movie, Fellowship of the Rings, is a very obvious gray color, you have to find the way of painting his cloak so that it will kind of stand apart from his jacket. So I did, again, Steel Legion Drab for the for the trousers. When, whenever you're doing trousers, and what I love about the Lord of the Rings models is a lot of the look of the models in order to fit the, um, the colors of the movie are plays on different various browns, dark browns, light browns, and um, there's, there's not really anything any, anything too bright or colorful. I think Merry or Pippin, one of them have a blue jacket and a red cape or something, but for the most part, the outfits in the movies for the Hobbits are different takes on browns shaded and highlighted back up. So Steel Legion Drab to make his pants a little bit lighter than Frodo's and to create some contrasting color because again, he's got that very drab looking cloak and very uh, simple plain gray jacket. To do his blonde hair, okay, I found another technique of doing blonde hair on a model that I think is just really, really good. It's Zandri Dust highlighted first. Usually I save the highlighting till the end, but I highlighted it with, I believe it was Rackarth Flesh. This time I did go up to Rackarth Flesh, highlighted the tips, got individual strands of hair picked out, and then after you're done highlighting, when it looks very cartoony, you just take your Seraphim Sepia and water it down just a little bit, add a couple drops of water. Oh, sorry, let's get that focus on. Add a couple drops of water and then shade it into the hair strands and it's gonna create this beautiful blending of the colors that is just gonna Tie, tie it all together, I guess. The basing was done very simply by adding some of this, I think it's Meadow Flock or Summer Flock from Gale Force 9. It's very, very cool because it not only has some static grass, but also what looks like this, you know, kind of red looking either flowers or uh, just undergrowth with the green kind of bushy looking uh, undergrowth. So matches what I believe is a good Lord of the Rings 
kind of general aesthetic, which is woodland or, or out in nature, and without having to get too specific about season or colors and anything like that. Sorry, let's get a little bit of focus back there. There we go. Okay, so that's, that's what I have painted up. In my uh, to-do list, I have two things that I'm gonna be really jamming on as we, as we get to the end of the year here. Let me see if I can, I can prep them and uh, get away from the blurriness of this camera for a second. So the first thing is my uh, fellowship commission. So you've got your, I, I think they created a box set with, with these figures. I'm not sure if this is all of them. I don't think this is all of them, but you got two hobbits, I got a Gimli, I've got an Aragorn, I've got a Legolas, and a Boromir. So I, I'm really, really looking forward to painting that. And also in the commission, I have a little oops, Bilbo Baggins here, as portrayed by, uh, as portrayed in, in Lord of the Rings, not the Martin Freeman Bilbo. I've got an Eowyn armored up, ready for battle, with her in her uh, Rohan armor. I've got a Gandalf the White, raising his staff up, looking very Ian McClellan-like. And here I've got an Eomar, which I think was Carl Urban in the movies, who uh, I just, we just saw the, uh, the preview for the next Star Trek movie, and he looks like he's, he's gonna be having fun in that as, as Bones McCoy even more. So, a lot, lot of fun, a lot of great um, Lord of the Rings things still, still on the on the uh, to do list, and uh, the, what I think is the the crowning creme de la creme piece is the Dark Lord himself, Sauron from I think they they released a a special like special edition pack where you can where you get Sauron. I think this was like the uh, either the last the last alliance from the very beginning of Fellowship where he's coming in and then he gets his fingers chopped off by uh, the human king. On um, the way in, when I was prepping all the models and everything, I noticed that his, his horn here had popped off in transit. So I glued it back on, but this is a tough piece, man. This helmet piece, the connection is very, very, uh, I guess, vulnerable and sensitive and so I've I've been gluing it but I, I can't pin it I, I've tried to pin it as well but there's no good angle for a pin to go in because you'll see that the length of the actual metal piece headed out away from the helmet is not long enough to stick a pin inside so I've, I've got some other ideas of um, double sealing and really hardening that that join and I'm gonna try them out because I'm, I'm just worried that in transit back the, uh, the little guy's gonna pop off again, so. Beautiful model though, and the, the examples that I've seen of it online are just really, really cool looking. It's a very dark kind of dirty brass or bronze and uh, black robes, just like the beginning of the uh, Last Alliance fighting against all of the forces of Mordor. Very, very exciting, looking forward to it, and uh, stay tuned because I also have a Seven Days of Christmas project that I'm gonna try to whip through from now until the the uh, blessed day of Christmas coming up on the 25th of December. Thanks so much for watching and checking out my Lord of the Rings work. If you want to support me and be a patron of my studio, check out my Patreon link. I'm putting the uh, link down below in the description. You can also commission me to work on something for you. Like all of this that I showed you today is commission work. I don't really paint anything for myself anymore. It's all uh, it's all commission work and you can get, in, get a hold of me and check out my website, warbostastudios.com and uh, warbossdaystudios at gmail.com. And finally, what else do I have to write? Sauron, what do I have to write, or what, I, what do I have to talk about? Yeah, that's right, I'm writing an ebook on my technique on painting and my whole process and I guess the, uh, the skill set that I use when I go about painting. I'm gonna release it on Apple eBooks, or iBooks, OBooks, UBooks, sometimes YBooks, and also Kindle. Uh, eventually when I get it all written up, but if you want to check it out uh, as I write as I write it chapter by chapter I included an introduction the introduction chapter for free on my patreon feed But I also have a private patreon feed and I'm gonna be putting up each chapter there If you want to check it out before I release it then I'm gonna be putting it up there 
uh, as I write it, like I said, all you have to do is become a patron at the patron at the three dollars or more a month level, and yeah, you can <laughs> you can read it, give me feedback, uh, help me kind of edit my work before it goes out to the masses, and uh, yeah, I'd love to get your feedback on at least the introduction chapter. I tried to write it with my you know, my, 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 my kind of personality and my flair, make it a little bit different from the standard dry how to paint books that, that you might have uh, seen or read or purchased. I've bought so many how to paint miniatures books in, in, my, in my time that I think I want to write one that is distinctly my voice. So yeah, check it out. Uh, it's going to have everything in it from how to how to choose a project to uh, sticking to fluff and theme, working with insignia, and just being creative and having the best looking army you can put on the table. All right, all right, Mr. Frodo, we're gonna go now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.